Hi, it is April 23rd, 2021. This is L. Hay. I live somewhere north of Fairbanks, Alaska, and I'm a subarctic beekeeper, one of the many. I am watching the bees right now. They're all over the place. Even though the temperature's in the 50 degree range Fahrenheit, they are doing orientation flights. The last couple days, I hived three four pound boxes of bees. One has a Alaska honeybee queen in it. I think I explained that in another podcast. The other two have old world carniolians. And when these boxes came to Alaska, they came on a flight from Alaska Airlines. I think from the almond fields in California. And that's how we get our bees. If we don't overwinter our bees, then we buy them from somebody else that brings them up here. At $200 to $250 a box, it's a lot of money for bees. And as they come up from California, they bring with them mites and the various viruses that mites spread. And they bring with them some nosema virus and such. But that's another story. That's another podcast. So right now, I've got the hives that made it through winter, which is also always a joy. And I've got the three new hives. And they're very active. They're doing orientation flights, which means they are flying outside the hive. And then they turn about 180 degrees and face the hive. And they go back and report to the hive where they are. Something like that. And they come out and they make wider circles and they go a little higher to orient themselves as to where they are and to where the nectar and pollen sources are. Ironically, we have no nectar and pollen sources right now. Nothing is blooming. Although we should be seeing pussy willow pretty soon. That's usually the first thing to bloom here. So right now, their nectar is coming from the sugar syrup I'm feeding them in the top feeders. And their pollen is coming from a pollen substitute that I've got right in front of the hives in some recycled plastic containers. They'll swim into the containers and gather the pollen into their pollen pockets and take them back into the hive and do what they do. This weekend, I'm going to do an oxalic acid treatment for all the colonies at one time. I checked yesterday and there's no brood frames in the boxes that have overwintered. There were when I took them out, so those bees have hatched and the queens are laying. So I don't have any capped brood, and I'm hoping they don't get capped today. And tomorrow morning I'll come out when it's cold outside and all the bees are in their hive, and I'll plug the entrances and stick my oxalic acid vaporizer wand in there, and that will kill the mites. The mites will drop off the bees onto the bottom boards, and I'll pull out the bottom boards and check and see how much of a mite issue there is. And then clean the bottom boards and stick them back in. It's important that we treat our bees for mites. Because not only do they live off of the bees and transmit viruses, but those mites go to other apiaries and infect other colonies. And they do all sorts of bad things to the bees. They weaken them. They mess with their ability to orient themselves. They weaken the bees to the point where their immune system becomes compromised and they are more vulnerable to other viruses. The mites also mess with the bees' ability to thermoregulate, which directly affects us here in the subarctic because we need our bees to be able to thermoregulate during winter. So as I watch the bees flying around, flying around me, flying above me, figuring out where they are. They're all real active, which is a great sign. I've got two queens in cages. I'm waiting for the bees to accept those two queens so I can release them from their cages. The bees are unfamiliar with the queens that were shipped up with them. And if I were to let the queens out now, they would kill her. So that queen bee in there is emitting pheromones out of the top of her head her hypophalangeal gland and the bees in the hive are becoming used to that pheromone and they will claim her as their own. 
and there'll be peace in the colony for a little while. So I'm excited by the activity I'm seeing. Lots of bees, lots of flights. The bees that survive the winter are out as well. I can tell because they're returning to their hives. The bees will return to the hive that they've been occupying. Along with that pollen substitute I've got out in front of them, I've got a container that has lots of those glass stones in it and that has a bunch of fresh water. Along with the containers of pollen substitute, I've got a large plastic container that has rocks and such in it and that is full of water. The rocks are for the bees to land on so that they can drink the water without drowning. Right now there's no other source of fresh water for them unless they were to take a risk and go into a puddle, but we don't know how that would turn out. So they're going through quite a bit of water, which is great. So I'm gonna sit here for a while and watch what's coming in and out of the hive and how they're behaving and make some notes in my colony tracking app on my phone. So that's it for today. Thanks for joining me. Have a good weekend.